Have you ever wondered why Tesla, a leader in electric vehicles, avoids hydrogen-powered cars? The battery versus hydrogen fuel cell debate, ignited by Elon Musk's dismissal of hydrogen cars as mind-bogglingly stupid, begs deeper exploration. Explore the intricacies of energy efficiency, resource extraction, and environmental impact as we navigate this debate. Could hydrogen power be a hidden gem for the future? Or is it bound to stay in the shadows? We will answer it all in this one video, so stay tuned till the end. You've probably heard Elon Musk isn't a fan of hydrogen cars, he's called them mind-bogglingly stupid. And it's not just him, many car experts agree. But why? And why aren't there more hydrogen cars around? Let's find out together in simple terms. You can probably count the number of hydrogen-powered car models released so far on just one hand. But did you know there are some challenges with battery-powered cars too? In recent months, the demand for metals like nickel, cobalt, aluminium, manganese, and lithium, needed for making lithium-ion batteries, has skyrocketed. This sudden surge has raised concerns about the sustainability of the electric vehicle industry. So, it begs the question, is hydrogen really as silly as some say? After all, it's the most abundant element in the universe. It would seem almost cosmic if we couldn't figure out how to use it as a fuel source, right? But if hydrogen isn't the answer, why not? And more importantly, can we make hydrogen a smarter choice? Think of hydrogen like a supercharged energy source waiting to be unleashed. While it's true that hydrogen is famously combustible, in a hydrogen-powered vehicle, there's no fiery combustion involved. Instead, the magic happens inside a device called a fuel cell. The car carries hydrogen gas in a special tank, just like it carries gas in a traditional car. But when you turn on the hydrogen-powered car, the gas flows into the fuel cell, where something amazing occurs. Inside the fuel cell, hydrogen molecules split apart, creating electricity without any flames or explosions. It's kind of like a battery, with a positive and negative side separated by a special substance. The hydrogen gas zooms into the cell at super high pressure, meets a catalyst made of platinum, and voila, electricity is born. It's a bit like magic, but really it's just the power of science at work. Let's take a closer look at the incredible science behind how hydrogen powers a vehicle without any combustion. When hydrogen molecules enter the fuel cell, they encounter a special catalyst called platinum, which causes them to split apart, releasing their electrons. These electrons then embark on a journey through a conductor, creating the electricity that powers the vehicle. Meanwhile, the hydrogen ions, left behind after the electrons depart, travel through a separator to reach the other side of the cell. Once there, they reunite with oxygen molecules, creating water as a byproduct. It's like a dance where hydrogen and oxygen come together, producing the clean green energy that propels the vehicle forward. Let's take a step back and look at why Elon Musk isn't sold on hydrogen power. While hydrogen is abundant and has incredible potential, there's a catch. It's a bit of a clingy element. You won't find pure hydrogen just hanging out on Earth. It's always hitched to other elements like oxygen. So, to harness hydrogen's power, we have to separate it from its companions. One method is electrolysis, where we use electricity to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. If we power this process with renewable energy, like solar or wind power, we get what's called green hydrogen, a zero-emission fuel. Sounds promising, right? But Elon and others have reservations, and it's all about the bigger picture. Let's dive deeper to understand why. Another way to get hydrogen is by pulling it out of natural gas through a process called steam reforming. It's like cooking up hydrogen from methane gas and steam in a hot, pressurized pot. But here's the catch. While we get the hydrogen we want, we also release carbon, which isn't great for our planet. This method, called gray hydrogen, is cheaper than the greener version made from renewable sources. Shockingly, despite its environmental downside, gray hydrogen makes up a whopping 95% of all hydrogen produced. Once we have our hydrogen, it needs to be cooled, squished, and moved to hydrogen filling stations. But here's the kicker. All this transportation often relies on fossil fuels for energy. So, while hydrogen has its perks, there are some serious environmental hurdles to overcome. Now, let's get straight to the point and uncover the biggest challenge with hydrogen-powered vehicles. Efficiency. Imagine energy as a currency. How much of it actually reaches the wheels of the car after all the steps involved? Well, in the case of hydrogen fuel cells, there's quite a bit of loss along the way. From creating the hydrogen gas to transporting and storing it, plus converting it into electricity, there's a lot of energy that doesn't make it to its final destination. On average, about 62% or even more can be lost in this process. In the worst case scenario, it could even be as high as 78% lost. So, when you look at the efficiency of hydrogen power in a vehicle, 
it's somewhere between 22% and 38%, which isn't exactly stellar. Compare that to traditional internal combustion engines, which can have an efficiency as low as 13%, and you'll see why some folks are skeptical. But here's the kicker. Battery electric vehicles blow them both out of the water, boasting an efficiency of between 73% and 80%. And this is why Elon Musk isn't exactly a fan of hydrogen fuel cells. He's all about efficiency, and that's what drives everything at Tesla. While batteries seem like the go-to choice because of their efficiency, the truth is, both batteries and hydrogen have their ups and downs. Batteries, for example, are great for powering electric vehicles. But here's the catch. Making them isn't exactly eco-friendly. We're talking about digging huge holes in the earth and releasing harmful chemicals into the environment during the mining and manufacturing process. It's like punching nature in the gut and then kicking it while it's down. Not cool at all. Plus, lithium-ion batteries only work at their best for a few years before they start declining and end up in the trash, adding to pollution. But hey, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Let's talk about the bright side. We're making strides in creating more sustainable battery technologies, like LFP, that use fewer rare metals. Plus, we're getting better at recycling batteries on a large scale, closing the loop on their life cycle. And here's the kicker. We're shifting towards powering our resource extraction and manufacturing with green, renewable energy, making batteries a greener choice overall. But hold up. Hydrogen has its own perks too. By combining electrolysis with renewable energy, we can produce green hydrogen, which is pretty awesome. Sure, electrolyzers and fuel cells aren't exactly cheap in terms of environmental impact, and they still rely on rare metals like platinum, but don't lose hope. We're seeing advancements in hydrogen electrolyzers, and more renewable energy sources like solar and wind farms are coming online to power them. Eventually, this could make producing hydrogen cheaper and more environmentally friendly. So, when it comes down to it, we don't have to choose between batteries and hydrogen. There's room for improvement on both fronts. It's all about finding the best solution for the job at hand, using batteries and hydrogen for different purposes. Batteries are likely the top choice for mass-produced personal vehicles due to their efficiency and the ease of tapping into the grid for energy. Sure, charging an electric vehicle takes longer than filling up a hydrogen car, but with electric charging stations becoming more widespread and the ubiquitous availability of electricity, it's a convenient option. On the flip side, hydrogen shines in heavy-duty and commercial vehicles where energy demands are high and fast refueling is crucial. For industrial machines like forklifts, hydrogen fuel cells have already proven to be a successful solution. Ultimately, it's about playing to the strengths of each technology to meet specific needs and ensure a sustainable future for transportation. Consider this. Hydrogen emerges as a promising solution for long-haul trucking due to its combination of extended range and rapid refueling, potentially rivaling diesel-powered trucks. Yet, you might wonder why Tesla, a leader in electric vehicles, is sticking with batteries for its semi-truck. Well, it's all about efficiency. Tesla's expertise lies in battery technology and electric charging infrastructure, not hydrogen fuel cells. Developing an entirely new hydrogen system wouldn't make sense when their existing setup works just fine. The Tesla Semi will leverage the same tried and tested components as their other vehicles, scaled up for larger applications. While it may not match the range of hydrogen-powered trucks, it's not rendered useless. It simply offers a different, albeit more limited, solution. So, have we answered our initial question? Perhaps not definitively, but the journey has shed light on various aspects of hydrogen power. Now, the real question is, what are your thoughts on hydrogen? Is it a futile endeavor? as Elon Musk suggests? Or do you see potential applications for it in the future? Let us know your answers in the comments section below. And if you liked this video, then do give it a big thumbs up. And for more such amazing videos, do subscribe to our channel.